So now we need to actually start creating some confidence intervals and talk about the process. So we've already talked about how we find a point estimate, but usually because of sampling error, our point estimate is not the same as the population value. So what we do is create some sort of interval around that point estimate, and it's called a confidence interval. And we're hoping that the bulk of the time, our true population value is somewhere in our confidence interval. We never know where, but it gives us some good information. So whenever it comes to writing a confidence interval, the general format is your point estimate plus or minus your margin of error. Plus or minus because remember we take our point estimate and once we want to go below it and then above it to create this region around it. So now let's define margin of error. It's the maximum error or basically the difference there is between the point estimate and the true population parameter. So it's the most you're willing to be off by. It's the maximum error. And so sometimes you'll actually hear it called the maximum error of the estimate. When it comes to confidence intervals, we're going to be doing them about means, proportions or percents, and standard deviations all in the upcoming sections. And so even though we haven't created any confidence intervals yet, now we kind of understand the process. So if we know how a confidence interval is created, then technically we could go backwards on a confidence interval and we can figure out what point estimate somebody used to create the interval and what margin of error they used to pad that point estimate. So the first thing is to find the point estimate and the formula is the upper limit plus the lower limit divided by two. So assuming that our confidence interval is from a low to a high, then we're taking you know, the high plus the low and dividing that by two. To find the margin of error looks really similar. We take the upper limit minus the lower limit and divide by two. So just to kind of summarize, when it comes to the point estimate, what we're doing on this one is we're adding because we want to find the middle. That was what the confidence interval was built around. And in terms of the margin of error, we subtract to find what's the halfway point, like how far did it take to get halfway. So let's go ahead and look at this example here. So maybe I sampled a bunch of students and found the average number of points, and I made this confidence interval. So I don't have all the tests, I don't know what the real class average is, but it must have been between 95 to 93 points. How did I get that? Well, for the point estimate, I added the two end values, divided by two, and got 89. So my point estimate, my sample average, must have been an 89. 89 should be dead center in the middle of this confidence interval. When I eyeball it just like that, I don't know, it's a little hard to tell 89 is dead center in the middle, but it's definitely in there. Your point estimate always has to be in there because that's how we built the interval. Secondly is the margin of error. We subtract the values, but we need a positive, so that's why the 93 had to come first, and we get a distance of four. So my margin of error is four. I should be able to take 89, subtract 4, and get the low end. It is 85. 89 plus 4 does add to 93. So I feel pretty good that I know this confidence interval was based on a sample average of 89 with plus or minus 4 on both ends.